Hello, welcome to today's episode. Um, what's unique about today is our guest has never been on a podcast before, ever, never told her story anywhere. So we are the first to debut Jane Spreckley coming to us from Newtown, Pennsylvania. Welcome, well, Jane. Welcome, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. This is so yeah. exciting. Yes. And you just let us know that we're going to see you in New York. I am. Well. Yes. And so I'm really excited about that. Yes. Oh, yeah, well, hopefully so, this won't air after yeah. we've been in New York. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to be careful with how we speak because we don't know when our episodes are going to air. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, well, either way, we'll, we'll we'll have seen you, or we will. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be great. Yes. Either way, yes, we're excited about that. I'm so happy you're coming. Me too. I'm really looking forward to it, to meeting everybody and yeah. seeing everybody in person. That'll be great. We are too. So we know you have a unique story so i'm i'm really excited to hear it well um you start where I, you want to start and we'll just take it from there okay i was born in 1963 um my i was born in wilmington delaware um to my birth mother was when she got pregnant was 13 oh so um, very young i wow yeah um i didn't know any of that i mean my mom my mom growing up, she told me I was adopted. I always knew, um, from a, like before I even knew what it is, you know? And then one day she, we were driving along and she said, I was probably about eight years old. And she said, um, uh, she told me what my name used to be. So I'm not sure how I, how they knew that, but I guess because I had an amended birth certificate and they went through an attorney to, to adopt me through the agency it was the children's bureau of delaware and so we're driving along in the car i was about eight years old and my mom said told me my birth name and she said you know that that meant that we had to change your name when you know when we adopted you and um so i was just i just always had this like identity thing like i i thought well that's weird i have two um two people you know, I, yeah. and I, I never could understand that. And so, um, it's still I just, hard to understand. It it, is. It's very Actually. hard to understand. I don't, you know, I, I don't feel like two people I'm a Gemini. So, which makes it even weirder, but <laughs> <laughs> it fits um, you. It does. Um, so I never really wanted to search. I ne never, it never, I had the greatest upbringing. I had two wonderful parents. I had a, a brother who was two years younger than me and he was biological to my mom and dad. My mom and dad couldn't have kids. My mom had a, um, in 1962, she had experienced a blood clot on her brain and they, mm. they went in and took the blood clot out, but she had a stroke while recovering. And so she had to learn how to walk and talk and do all the, you know, motor skills all over again. And she was a physical therapist. So she, and she wanted to get back to, you know, work doing that, but, um, she was a stay at home mom early in Wait, our years. your brother, I'm sorry, your biological brother was younger than you or two years yes. older. Okay. He's, he's two years younger. Oh, okay. Um, so they, they thought they couldn't have kids and then they, right. Right. Yeah. It's the typical, you know, my, yeah. you know, they couldn't, yeah. they didn't think they could have kids. And then, um, my mom got pregnant. Um, so we're, uh, about two years apart. And, um, so my life was just like a fairy tale. It was just this great, you know, I never needed to search. I never wanted to search. And unlike a lot of us adoptees, I liked my birthday. I, I celebrated it. I liked it. I, you know, the, the thing that I always thought was it's weird because I don't like to celebrate. I like to celebrate my birthday, but I don't want the attention. I just wanted to like, I wanted everybody to be there, but no, get no gifts. I didn't like the attention being on me, but mm -hmm. I did, didn't mind the birthday part. Um, so can, can I ask you quickly, what was the name? What was your name? Colleen. Colleen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Colleen. Yep. So isn't it um, strange? It's like owning this other name. <laughs> it is weird. And, um, so what I did find out was, um, uh, uh, well, first of all, I never wanted to search. And my mom always said, you know, if you ever want to search, I'll help you search like most people. And I, I believe she would be, she would be really happy 
to have helped me. Um, my, both my um, adoptive parents passed away. So at the age of 59, I decided, or 58, I guess, I decided to think about searching, um, really searching. I did had done it 23 and me and um, didn't, there wasn't anybody close. I have like 1500, you know, four five and six cousins or whatever. Yeah. But um, so uh, during COVID, I, um, I had a name, I had my whole name. I knew my whole name. So I didn't know, I still can't figure out why it would be so hard to search. Um, so wait, was your, your parents lived in Pennsylvania and adopted you from Delaware? Yes. Okay. Okay. And my birth, my birth mother was from um, Westchester, which is 45 minutes, you know, towards the city away from here. Right. Um, and was I she, never knew. Was she sent to, li- well, you, you didn't know, I guess. Yes. She- I know. Uh, I know everything okay, about well, the- that. Yeah. She, yeah. She was sent away to a home for unwed mothers and um, my parents got me at 10 months. So I was in a foster home, mm-hmm. actually two foster homes um, until I was 10 months. Um, and, you know, I, 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 the pictures that I have from the foster home, there's two and I have a smile on my face and I, you know, I never thought there was really any, no, here's the fog thing. I never really (laughs) knew there was any issues. And so I hate to be jumping around like this, but when I was fine, it's how it comes out. Yeah. um, Left my dad and, um, so she didn't do it in a very nice way. She just picked up and left and then told us that, you know, she had took taken a few things out of our house and left my dad. Well, it was on their 20th wedding anniversary and um, two days after Christmas. So Did they, And so she didn't take you and your brother with her? She asked me if I wanted to go. She asked us if we wanted to go. And, you know, they had been arguing and fighting before. And I was always trying to, like, get them to stop and fix it because that's just what, you know, I didn't want yeah. them to break up. So um, I didn't want to go with them. Well, my we I live we live with my dad. And um so I, I always knew that there was like that abandonment thing, but I never, it never dawned on me that there was two abandonments. Mm-hmm. Until, Some, you know, I have a similar yeah, story. Yeah. How old were you when this happened? I was 14. 14. 14 okay. Yes. So um, tough time in a girl's life oh, to, be, it's to lose awful. her, to have her mother leave. Yeah. Really and hard. I, I the relationship I had with my um, adoptive mom was, it was hard. I mean, it's, I don't, I, I never knew why it was so hard, but I, and I, I didn't, I just, I don't know why it was so hard, but I do now because yeah. I probably was looking for something else and, you know, I was never threw it in her face or anything, but. Did your brother go with her? Is that what you said? No, oh, no. okay. So both oh, of both you stayed. stayed. No, we both stayed with my dad. And then, um, you how, know, how both... was your relationship with your brother? I was just curious. Not, not great. And mm-hmm. not, I loved him when he came home from the hospital. And then, you know, when he, when we started going to school, I was bullied a lot. And, um, I, I thought that he would stick with me, you know, on the bus and things like that. I thought maybe he would stick with me and he didn't. So it just made for like a sibling, a lot of sibling angst. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you know, when you think about it, you have no genetic connection. No. There's no, right. You yeah. just happen to be in this family together. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. But I never, I never felt um, not a part of it. I never felt like I didn't belong. My mom, you know, my mom, always, my parents, all, my father, this is the funniest thing, but my, my dad, they went to the foster home to get me, I guess. My dad said, um, and I tell this at, I told this at both of their eulogies that my dad walked in and he saw me standing up in the playpen and he said, that's my sweetheart with the almond eyes. Well, oh. it's just, I felt that my whole life. I felt oh. that he really, really just that I was his daughter. And that was, that was it. Yeah. I had that with my father and it, oh, it just, was, it's, it's a rare thing. I think after really talking is. to so many people, yeah, it really is. Um, yeah. Because I felt a part of it. I didn't feel like I never needed to search. I never wanted to search you know, and my mom would bring it up every once in a while. And I would say, no, no, that's okay. You know, I don't, I don't need to. Um, But then, 
you know, I did the DNA thing and I, you know, like most people say, like they spit in the tube and just like held it over the mailbox and like, okay, here goes, let's do it. And, um, so, and I had uh, gotten in touch with the adoption agency just to see if there was any way I could get, um, you know, some more information, like non-identifying information or things like that. And I had gotten my original birth certificate, which had my birth mother's name on. Um, but I, um, I guess, I guess it was during COVID. I was looking onto the uh, website where you can find people's high school pictures and things, classmates.com or something. And I happened to come across a picture and I looked at it and it was like looking at me in the mirror. Mm. I, I never had that. I never wow. saw that before. And, um, so, um, then I thought, well, all right, I told the agency about it and I got some non-identifying information. And then I looked, I Googled the, the names of these. Oh, I know. I, I know. I, I Googled it and found an obituary for, um, my, I guess would be my maternal grandfather. And in the, in the obituary, it said predeceased by his daughter and it had my birth mother's name. And so I was like, ah, I was like, oh, well now I guess, you know, I'll never be able to meet her. And I think for me is that is the hardest thing. Yeah. I, I just don't, uh, it's really, I have that too. It's like yes, the one I, person you want to meet. You, yes. That, I mean, you want to hear their voice. You want to yeah. see what they look like. And well, um, so they, they my birth mother was one of seven and she was a twin, a boy, girl, twin. Mm. So, um, they sent letters to four of the siblings and the next day they heard from them and all of them wanted to know who I was and what, you know, they had some questions. What did I want? What, you know, who was I? And, you know, very excited about the whole thing. In the meantime, I had done ancestry and in the, uh, there in, on a Friday night, I was sitting looking at ancestry and there was a message that popped up and it said, um, you have a private message and it, it said, are you the person that reached out to the agency? And I said, I wrote back and said, yes, I am. And she said, well, I'm your half sister. Well, I never had any other siblings. And, you know, I was one of two and I thought, wow. And she said, you have two sisters and a, you have two half sisters and a brother. And I was like, oh my God, like it just, my whole body was just like, I just couldn't believe that I, you know, um, that this was possible. So um, then later on I had done a 20 I had done 23 me first and then ancestry well I found my paternal my maternal sides kids and um then about a year later I got a, a message on 23 me that said that I have a half brother and I was like oh no like because you never th- I never once in my life thought about a, a birth father like I don't know funny why. that happens a lot I know. And I like, I'm so confused about that. Why that is because we all know there's a, there's a father involved or a dad involved some, some, you know, so anyway, it said I had a half brother. Well, the agency that I had gotten in touch with, she told me that I couldn't reach directly out to him because if my birth father didn't know, you know, he, if he, they, they needed to reach to him first. So um not their call but um <laughs> right right like why you know it's so on my Hello, ancestry, i'm a uh, you know a 58 year old woman absolutely. or whatever you were at the time absolutely like, give me a break yeah right i know and it, it still upsets me because i've gone down to the delaware uh vital statistics twice to try to get information more information mm-hmm. you know i've gotten identifying information and non-identifying information but i want the foster records too i mean yeah. that's part yeah. of my i can't you know, find those either no i want them part of your and, life um, i got i mean especially because uh, it was almost two years for you is that what you said yeah 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 it's a long time. I, I mean it was a long time so then um they got in touch with they sent my birth father a, a letter and i didn't hear anything and the about i guess it might might have been a 
close to a year or eight months or something, he, um, the, the agency emailed me and she said, Jane, you know, if, if we don't hear anything, I'm going to have to close your case. Cause it had been open for two years and they close it after two years, you know, and she said, if we hear anything, you know, we'll revisit it, but we have to, you know, for our records, whatever, have to, uh-huh. um, close it. So a week after she said that, she emailed me and I was at work. It was a Friday afternoon. And she said, um, Jane, I just heard from your birth father. And I was like, oh my God. She said, yeah, can you just, I, I know the information, but can you just give me some basic, he asked a couple of questions. Can you just answer a couple of questions? And they were, one of the questions was, what did I want? Why did I wait so long? And mm. how did I know that it was him? Mm. And I wrote back because your son, because his son came up on my, DNA. And I really didn't want anything. I just wanted to know you. And I want to know where I came from. And um, why did I wait so long? Because DNA wasn't, you know, wasn't, we weren't able to do DNA. And so I I waited to do DNA. And um, within three minutes, she texted me back and she said, he wants to have your phone number. Is that okay? So I said, sure. So he called me and we talked for uh, 45 minutes. And we we discovered that my birth mother probably didn't tell him the correct age. She probably didn't say that she was that young. Um, How old was, was he? He, yeah. he was 16. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was 16. Um, so he really is having, he's still having a hard time. Um, he, he, I don't, he doesn't communicate like the maternal side of the family. Like he's, I think he really is in shock. And I actually went to visit them. I met them all. I have met all of my siblings. He didn't know you, she had been pregnant. No, she kept he went into secret. the air force. She said she didn't, um, it was, someone, a, it was Vietnam, right? Uh, yes, he was in the air force. He went in and he came back and tried to find her, but I guess she was in the home for unwed mothers. Oh. And, um, after that, he just went, he went back to the air force, got married and, um, and has a family. He has two kids. Well, I actually got to meet them this summer. I met the, they live in Seattle. So I got to meet, um, them and spend the week with them in, but not, um, him? not him. Yeah. I, oh. yes. And I had met him. He came here last January. Um, How was he, that? It yeah. was, he, it was very strange. He came down off the escalator from the, I met him at the airport and he didn't tell me to do it or not, but I decided I was going to go meet him at the airport because this is my one and only chance to have a, a parent, like meet a parent face to face. Well, he came down the escalator and I said, Oh my God, like there is no doubt that this is my birth father comes down the escalator and he's looking at me and got a big smile on his face. And he hugged me and he said, wow, there is no doubt that you're my daughter because we look a lot alike, but then I look alike my maternal side also. But so he, 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 his real, can I interrupt for a second? He had fond feelings for your mom because he came back and looked for her. Yes. They, they dated like six or seven times and mm-hmm. he really said he's he said he really liked he really liked her and he was confused why he didn't you know he was upset why didn't she tell me you know i could have helped and i could have been more of a help and i said well that's you know that's your 76 year old brain saying that you you were 16 you know how do you how do you do this when you're 16 years old yeah so um it turns out that when i was out well let me say when we went he wanted to go to her grave and just because he, I guess he wanted to deal with it in his own way. So he came here last January and I, I took him there. And the first time that I had gone to, to the grave, I, I didn't, my sister took me and I, I, you know, I, I said, Oh, I'd go, you know, I'd like to see where she is. And I, I went and I got out of the car and I'm standing there and, and I thought, this is weird. Like, why am I doing this? And all of a sudden this, this like, this something happened to me and I thought this is the closest that I've ever been to the person that gave me life. And I just couldn't, I, mm. I, I started to sob and I was like, this mm. is just not, I couldn't believe it. And I turned to my I had, sister. I had an experience like that last year. I, I went to the grave of my mother 
Oh. And it really, I thought I would be like, okay, I'm at the grave of my mother and I'm with my aunt who's very affected by it. And I just, it kind of, it was weird. It, it was hard on me, much different than yeah. I thought it'd be. That's, that's what my feeling was. And my sister said, do you need a hug? And I was like, well, I guess, mm. I mean, I, oh. you know, I don't how, know. Jane, how did she die? And yeah. how she, old was she when she died? Yeah, I think she was in her early fifties and she had lung Ooh. cancer. Oh uh, gosh. Yeah. Um, she, um, and, oh, and the thing about this, what, the thing about my sister was my sister got pregnant at 18 and she told my birth mother that she was pregnant. And my birth mother said, I, I don't want you to make the same. I don't want you to have the same regrets that I have. And so she told mm -hmm. her that she had me and gave me up for adoption. So my sister had been looking for me for 30 years. Oh. So it's, you know, that the good part of this, that part of the story is that, you know, she's finally reunited with me, you know, and we have a really nice relationship, her and I, um, the other ones didn't know the other siblings, her siblings didn't know. I mean, cause I guess they were probably pretty young when, um, she got pregnant, but, um, she, uh, has been looking for me all these years and which was nice. sort of a reunion mm -hmm. in itself. You know, I, I, I didn't expect to even have siblings. And now it turns out that my birth father had had another child other than I, uh, an older child than his two kids that he has. So I have, I'm one of eight and I was, I only had one brother growing up. So it's, it's weird. It is and weird. has, has everyone been pretty welcoming? Yes. Um, on my, um, my father's side, my birth father's side, the, 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 my sister and brother are amazing. They are so, they were so happy to meet they, my sister. I didn't know her. I hadn't, um, talked to her. I talked to my brother on the phone once and, you know, he sounds like a really nice young guy and, but I hadn't heard from my sister and we had been scheduled to meet at a, at a, a brewery in Seattle. And so we're staying, I was standing there waiting and I look, she gets out of the car and she comes running down the sidewalk mm. with her arms out, you know, and she was like, Oh my God, I'm so happy to meet you. I can't believe it. It's so great to know you. And wow. we had a wonderful time there, but my, with my birth father, I don't know how he thinks or what he, he cause he's quiet. And I don't know exactly what it is that he thinks. Um, he probably so he's sad probably do you, do you yeah. feel like asking him i mean is that uh, something you feel comfortable asking him i yeah i i probably could um when when we were there visiting um my my brother uh let us stay in his townhouse and but you know by he uses it as an airbnb and so we stayed there and my, the, the night after that, the night that we had done, done the brewery thing, um, we, we came back and my, I texted my birth father and I said, oh my God, what a wonderful night. This was such a great night. And he texted me and he said, I love you. And I Aww. thought, wow. wow, like, okay. I, I, I just was, I didn't expect that from him because I had not, he had, wasn't emotional like that before but i guess it just was like a great night and we all he doesn't know how to show it no I'm sure i don't think i really don't think and i think he's you know it's he's 77 now and and i don't you know he didn't have me for 60 of those years mm -hmm. yeah so I, i'm not really it's so sure. strange you're so close in age like I they know. were really so young I yeah they i mean my birth mother really young and um <sighs> You know what the one thing I did know that I realized in this whole thing is that, you know, you, you think of you because you're the kid, you know, you're the adoptee and you 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 go along in your life and you're you know, you think about yourself. And I thought about her on my birthdays and things, but it wasn't I was never really obsessed with finding it out who I just wanted to see a picture or know a name mm -hmm. and then it like snowballs and then you want to know everything. And, yeah. Um, but I really really feel so that she did such a, a, a I don't even know what to say like such a a thing to make a better life for me and I and a lot of people don't think adoption is is a, a good thing but my situation was I'm I was in the right place 
I grew up in a great home with great parents and I'm just, I feel so fortunate, but so sad that I didn't get to meet her. I have a question. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, going back. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) We're probably going to ask the same thing. Going back. Did you, um, you told us that you were coming out of the fog before we got on Mm -hmm. with us sort of real in real time. Did you have a lot of feelings about like, Oh, like, did you have things where you push people away or relationship issues or what, what was that for you? No, I, no, not really. I I'm, I'm my mom, my adoptive mom was so ahead of her time. She was so, she, she was in the medical field. So she was very, you know, show your emotions, feel your emotions, do everything that, you know, um, to, to, just to show everything and feel what you feel. Like if you're angry, show anger. If you're sad, show sadness or whatever. And I never, you know, no, not really. I, I wasn't, um, yeah. I never had issues with that at all. Never had any kind of abandonment issues in relationships and not, no, uh, people left me like, you know, in my relationships, I was left more than leaving people, but, um, no, I, um, I didn't realize the abandonment. I I didn't realize the primal wound until I found out who Jean was and listening to you guys and reading the primal wound. I I had no idea. And, you know, it it hit me like a ton of bricks, like, Oh my God, no, I didn't just have one abandonment. I had two abandonments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. What did you, so I'm guessing you never got to find out your birth story. Was there anybody else in your mother's family that knew anything or knew the the details? (laughs) That's interesting. Um, my, my, my maternal grandparents are both deceased. My, my aunts and uncles, my birth mother's siblings. Um, I have met four of the remaining six and my aunt, my birth mother's youngest, younger sister, I met her and they didn't know, none of them knew about me that she was pregnant at at all. They, and I said, well, how did you get, how did you get away with her? Not like, not, how did you not know? And I found out that the only one that knew was her twin. And he, he was, they swore his parents made him swear to secrecy that he would never, ever say anything about it. Cause she just went away, had me and went back to school. So, yeah. you know, but he, and told she was me like in middle school. She was in ninth grade. Mm. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. I mean, well, I couldn't take care of myself when I was in 10th grade or <laughs> high school. I can barely take care of myself now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it is so just... young. Mm. But I mean, the, really the interesting young. thing about the meeting them is that they, you know, my, the, that aunt that told me about that, she, you know, I, I own my own cleaning business and I, um, I love photography. Well, we were sitting there one day after we had met and she said, you know, how uh, these, the pictures are on the wall, I, I have taken all these pictures on the wall. I said, Oh my God, like, wow. And then she said, um, yeah, I had my own cleaning business and I just looked and I was like, Oh my God. So it's close to, you know, that kind of thing was, uh, crazy. Cause I never had those kinds of um, you know, genetic connections or whatever, you know, similarities. Or, yeah. Like it's, yeah. And you don't connect that as a child. You just wonder no. maybe, I mean, for me, I just felt like, why am I so different? I did, it didn't yeah. even connect to me that it was. Did you look was, like your um, adoptive? Did you um, look at all like your, no, no, I was taller than everyone. Like my adoptive mom is what? Five foot three. I mean, I'm five mm-hmm. foot nine. Um, wow. I'm taller than my dad. I tower above my brothers. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I was yeah. awkward and hunched, you know, oh, I was so awkward hiding too. my hiding myself from, <laughs> yeah. from everybody so, not knowing why. That's crazy. Listening. We, I got, I looked exactly like my, I looked enough like my birth mom. I mean, my adoptive mom to, to pass like who we all, we looked a lot alike, all of us. So there was no, you know, I didn't feel out of place. I didn't have that like awkwardness or feeling of, and they made me feel so wonderful. They, they just, you know, made me feel a part of the whole family. And my she really was ahead of her time, like saying, telling was. you your birth name and, oh, for sure. I didn't but have I don't that know experience. how that, like, 
if -hmm. you had your birth name, then how couldn't you like, I guess, cause we didn't have as much technology back then. Yeah. You know, there was no computers to look up names or things like that. But- well, and also um, I think you know, Louise and I just finished back to back books on the podcast um, about that era, about the baby scoop era. And there, right. there was such a, for lack of a better word, brainwashing in, in the constellation of adoption that adopt adopted sure. parents really were told, you know, this is the best for the child to not tell them anything. And right. And except for slate. non-identifying information, right. these are blank slates, yep. create the life you want yep. for them. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, I, I mean, basically that's, it was that, you know, like this is, here's your child and raise them, raise them how you will you know and it's always that sliding door thing like what if somebody else came to the foster care and picked you up right because you did fit with that family i fit with my family too i didn't look like them but but i fit enough but what if a day later i went somewhere else you know there's so many bad stories it's it's really just like you're kind of at the whim of whatever system yeah yeah it's so, I, I, I just want it all to be open. Like I want it all. I want yeah. with, with DNA. Why not? You know, why not just open it all up now? Everybody's going to find out anything anyway, you know, yeah. it shouldn't be hidden anymore, but I think it's definitely more open in that, um, you know, it's not so, but, but it's still hard for people from our era to get their records yeah. and they're still yes. fighting like, it's... uh, you know, due to Georgia tan, um, I know. Oh my God. I mean, this is why just, it's... I listened to you guys, your episodes with the, um, with her, with the book. Oh. And it's just, oh, it's just so awful. It makes me so angry. It's like, it, it's so awful. It really is. It really is here um, in California. I'm not from California, but they, um, they're trying to pass a dirty bill, like a bill that goes with another bill that will, will seal up that adoptees can't get their records, which they can't still because an adopted father is the head of that Senate legislature. Uh, mm. And it's like, there are thousands of people, you know, hundreds of thousands of people you're affecting by this. And it's California, yeah. which is always more progressive, more but, liberal, more, more but not open. Yeah. yeah. Wow. No. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it, it, yeah. Uh, uh, one, I wanted to ask when you were growing up, how far away was your biological family from where you grew up? Like, did your mother grow up? Was she near you? Yeah. She, oh, oh, great question. Um, yes, they were f- about 45 minutes away from mm. me. And I found out from my sister that when I, I, I went to, I worked at camp, I worked at a Girl Scout camp in my high school, after high school like, for a few years. And I was down at a camp in, in um, Oxford. And I, I realized that when I was doing, when I was searching, I realized that the camp that I worked at was two doors down from a place where my birth mother lived with her husband. Wow. Yeah. At the time when I was there. Is that Oxford, Maryland? No, uh, no, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Oh yeah. Right. 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 Pennsylvania. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. And and I mean, it was, you know, it's, it's a wide open space, you know, it's a big area and not and farms and things like that. So there, it wasn't like right next door, but it was a few miles down the road, but still it was right there. And you could so, see each other at Walmart or whatever, you know, <laughs> piggly wiggly. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, Martin, those days. Hey, yeah. Martin, those days. Yes. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Oh yeah. Aim. Aims. Gosh. Yeah. So Thanks. how, how are you? I mean, this is all so relatively new for you. How are you processing all this? It's a lot, right? Suddenly, it is a lot. It is. And, and and I also two part question because I want to know where you're at with your brother that you grew up with. Um, mm. But th- this is a lot in a short period of time at a late age in life. How yeah. are you processing this? Well, it's I I think about the fact that. I'm so grateful that I was able to find this in such a short period of time. Like I I did all of it and I didn't really think of the consequences and I'm not really like, I don't dwell on it. I I just was so excited that it all happened and that everybody was so willing. And so 
you know, wanting to, I said to my sister in Seattle, when I saw her, I said, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are so open and how this is so great to me. And she said, don't you think that part of it might be you, how you put out, you put out what you, the vibes that you put out into the, in, into this whole thing. And I, I thought about that and I thought, wow, I, I really do deal with things pretty easily, you know, and, and I'm, I was just so grateful to know, um, I had to meet my my maternal half sister um, during COVID, and you know I was petrified to be even out in public. And we we decided to go out to a restaurant out in a you know sit outside, and we all had masks on and everything. But just th that I think was the most impactful for me. The first one, the first yeah. person that was you looked at that was just you just I couldn't believe it. So it's just so it's a miracle to me that it even is that you're even able to do this now. It's, I know, it's, it's really, it really is still kind of astounding. Like, yeah. It very, really, I mean, cause yeah. you guys are older. I mean, in your learned in your older life, right. You yep. didn't know. Oh, when you were younger. oh no, oh. I found, I found my oh, yeah, sorry to... family and um, well, as did you Louise in yeah. your thirties. Right. So uh, oh. yeah, I, I found my mother and sisters in my early 32, I guess. Yeah. I was 32 um, off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was another uh, thought that I had. Like if I was younger, I, I don't know how I would have mm -hmm. dealt with it, but, but knowing, you know, learning things from my adoptive mom and just able to handle things the way I, you know, and that I knew that she would be okay with it was, it just helped, you know, that helps it, a lot. It really does. Cause we did a lot of that, um, excited to meet and then the pushing away thing. And now in this age, I wish I just embraced it quicker and mm -hmm. sooner. And because yeah. I'm so enjoying my cousins and my aunt and right, you know. Now, well, what about your uh, brother that you grew up with? Are you do you stay in touch? We do. Um, he has two nieces, and I have two nieces and a nephew, and we have a closer relationship now than we have ever had. Um, we get along fairly well. We spend holidays together, and he he always just says, you know, when I tell him he's kind of, you know, he just kind of like, he doesn't really, he's not real emotion. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of emotion, but he says, I just want you to be happy. I'm so glad for you, which is enough for me. I mean that, you know, I know that he's not upset, but he knows that my mom would have totally been a fine. I'm not sure about my dad. My, my dad, I was his little girl, so I'm not sure, but I think that he would have wanted me to also be happy. And so it's just a, it's a relief to have that feeling of a completeness, you know, and when you, you go and search for all these birth family, this birth family, you go and search for all that, but really what you're searching for is yourself. This is true. Yes, this, that's know, a good line. Really that's true. That's like a... I've gotten the answers. And so it's just a help to be, you know, a whole person. I get yeah. sort of excited and I tell my brother who's five years old or not adopted. I tell him things and, and he's always like, I'm so happy for you, but he doesn't want to dwell on it or get deep right. about it. And he's right. He's happy for me, but he doesn't yes. really want to be involved. It's kind of that, which is okay. I mean, do you guys have does. Um, your adoptive parents are alive or both of mine have my passed God. away and her parents are alive. Oh, mm -hmm. are they, do they deal with it? Um, <laughs> Well, my, my mom listens to the podcast. I don't know if she yeah. listens to every one of them, but she's very supportive. And, um, it, 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 there were some learning curves when I started the podcast, I guess you could say, um, my dad, I don't, I'm certain has never listened or asks me about it or yeah. has any, didn't, didn't have a ton of curiosity, even when I found my that just might be his personality, not, yeah, you know, but no, he never, he never even, I don't think he's ever asked me anything about my biological family. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. It's harder for Sarah, because like you said, your parents passed and you can envision what they'd want. And I have the same thing. Right. She has to do it with parents alive. Right. So it's yes. kind of an interesting, you have to be open. Oh, and be like, oh, I can't yeah, imagine. Hard. I can't, I mean, mm -hmm. I know for a fact that my mom, my, my mom was, she was very unique in her she was, she grew up on, on a farm and she was very, uh, just, I, I can just say unique. And 
she she would have said to me if i would have come to her and say i found somebody she would be like let's get them on the phone let's go there let's visit them you know let's bring them up here we'll have them for dinner you know she would she would have just wanted the whole thing really fast and um so i gave last christmas i gave my um half sister a pin that was my mom's uh -huh. and i gave it to her and i said that my mom would be she would have been really happy for you to have this and when I gave it to her, she said, I just love the story so much. I just mm. love this whole story so much. It's not even the pin. Like it was a, a, P, a pin of a bee, a bumblebee. Mm -hmm. And it, my, mo um, my mom would have just, I know she would have given it to her because she likes bees. And so it would just, for, for me to do that was like an act of something that my mom would have done. Wow. This has just been so great, Jane. I teared up multiple times <laughs> telling your story and yeah. I'm so happy for you. Oh, um, thank you so much for this having is me. Really a great. It's like the part two. Story. Yeah. <laughs> part oh, two of great. your life has a whole different intricate yeah. it thing does, for you. And it's great. I'm so happy to share it with you guys. And I, I'm so looking forward to meeting you. It will be so I know. Oh, that will be I... that will be great. Can't wait to meet you soon. I, I mean it's so yes it's coming up two months I was from thinking now. about yeah. that Sarah it's coming up my <laughs> it's goodness two months from now yeah, yeah today two months from today right thank well, you so much yes. Jane we'll we will see you soon. Okay thank, thank you, you so say, much. see you in a minute. See you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.